It is already May 1st, 2021, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. Like, ridiculous. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> totally laughing my off. I said 2021, and I meant to say 2022. And that is how crazy the last past couple years have Please been. comment down below if you feel like this year has gone extraordinarily fast. I mean, I feel like, guys, I feel like we're already halfway over. So I do want you, though, before we get started in this uh, video where I'm going to be cooking up some potatoes and we're going to be talking about pro-metabolic eating, so stay tuned. But please let me know down in the comment section below um, in this you know, almost half a year that we've had already. Um, I know there's two more months, Chloe. It's only been four months, but still, in the last past four months, what improvements have you made uh, towards bettering your relationship with food and body or getting your period back? So let me know down below. I'd love to hear all of your guys' wins and everything that you have been uh, doing to get you to a better place. That is like, you know, music to my ears, hearing how you guys are bettering your life. Um, so, Drop those down in the comment section down below. Also, make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Flow with Chloe. If you don't know who I am, Instagram will tell you who I am. But basically, I'm an amenorrhea recovery coach. I help girls get their period back and also heal from a disordered relationship with food, body, and exercise. So if you lost your period, if you are a chronic dieter dealing with orthorexia, if you are someone who has a very tumultuous relationship with food, or if you're stuck in what we like to call quasi-recovery, then my channel is probably for you. So I would probably go ahead and hit the like button, also hit subscribe, and then we will become best friends. So, today for the little cooking thing we are doing, I just have these potatoes that, to be honest, have been sitting in my bowl on the counter for, I mean, I've been eating out a lot. I haven't eaten at home, um, like, at all. And every single night that I think I'm going to eat at home, someone comes to my house and says, hey, let's go do something else. And so, like, last night, I was like, yes. I'm just going to be at home. This is the first, like, what was it, Saturday night last night? The first night that I was like, I'm not going anywhere tonight. Like, I'm not doing anything. I sat at the beach all day. I was like, I have zero plans. I'm not going to be dancing late at night like I usually do. I'm not going to go out to the bars. I'm not going to go out and do anything. And then, and then I magically find myself eating pizza with, like, 12 other people. <laughs> so I didn't get to make the potatoes last night, so we're making them tonight. I So I'm just cutting them in little like french fry pieces and that's pretty much all we're going to do here. I also have some garlic and a red onion and some tomatoes. I think I'm going to do like a garlicky tomato red onion dish too to go alongside the potatoes and then I have some uh, pesto chicken. So the other day I put up a post on Instagram uh, that I've been wanting to post for a long time and I just haven't gotten around to chit-chatting about it so we are chit-chatting about it here but the post did uh, get quite a bit of traction and a lot of people messaging me saying like thank you so much for like calling this out. So. This is what I called out. I put this up right here and I said, I'm just gonna say it. The majority of the pro-metabolic space, while well-intentioned, is highly orthorexic. You ain't gonna die because your salmon contains PUFAs. Um, now, for those of you guys who don't know what this whole pro-metabolic thing is, um, pro-metabolic eating was kind of created or forefounded by this guy named Ray Pete and he talks a lot about metabolic health and what do we need to strengthen our metabolism. So what do we need to um, keep our liver happy so that we're producing enough T3 uh, so that our metabolism um, is working at top speed and efficiency so that digestion and hormones and everything are balanced. He talks a lot about serotonin and progesterone and things like that, right? Um, and this has become kind of like a I hate to say it, I'm gonna say it. This has become a new trendy diet out there. There you go, I said it, where's the applause? Okay, so let's chat about this because 
This is the, this is where diet culture gets really, really messy and turned around and really confusing and I need to still be chopping potatoes so don't distract me here but also I'm talking to you so hello. Um, but this is where diet culture gets really confusing because it will take something that seems really Okay, I'm not gonna point the knife at you. It will take something that is a typical diet or a form of restriction and it will put it in a pretty package and put the word health on it and make you think that it's all sunshine and rainbows if you follow it to a T. Um, and this is something that I feel like has been happening in the whole pro-metabolic space um, is that again like I said while well intentioned and we'll talk about what those well intentions are the pro-metabolic space to me coming from someone who suffered with orthorexia for many years and this is my career this is what I do is I, I literally talk with women day in day out about orthorexia and this fixation on clean eating and perfect eating and all of that um this is what i chat about and so i see it just uh kind of really prevalent in this community unfortunately 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 but also naturally because that's what happens when you start doing something like this so pro metabolic diet so this is kind of the gist of it um, I'm not going to go into full detail about it, um, but the pro-metabolic diet is, again, it's all eating for your metabolism. So it's all about eating simple sugars, uh, honey, even white sugar and um, dates and uh, fruit and things like that. So getting enough of your simple carbohydrates. And then it's all about eating bioavailable protein. So, the, you know, the things that I really do love about kind of the pro-metabolic space is that they really put an emphasis on eating like organ meats like pate and liver and things like that which are really high in nutrition they also um recommend you know eating animal products and meats which i know this world just tends to be so anti and against or at least when you're living in the kind of vegan space um it's very anti-animal products and i really appreciate that the pro metabolic space really appreciates uh eating good quality animal products organic grass-fed i think that's great um i really do like that they make you not scared of sugar um that they teach you that it's just simply glucose which is what your body literally works on and thrives off of and so in conjunction with the nutrient dense diet not something that we need to completely fear and be like oh, I ate sugar oh my gosh um again I'm not gonna cut these potatoes um and so another thing I appreciate from the pro metabolic space is it kind of just calls out this like radical extreme obsession with vegetables that our world has and just you know points out that hey it's not the most you know nutrient bioavailable food I'm not saying there's no nutrients in them oh my gosh I'm not saying that I'm not a vegetable hater look at all these vegetables I have around me there I'm sorry I'm looking at my counter there are vegetables around here right but it's saying hey you can't rely on that for your only source of nutrition like on Instagram when I see things that say like broccoli has more protein than beef I'm like no stop and that's something that the pro metabolic space really helps uh someone understand is that like hey especially if you have thyroid issues if you've been disorderly eating if you have a menorrhea if you have a low metabolic rate so aka if you're in energy debt is another way we can say that um eating copious amounts of broccoli is not going to be the thing that's going to be really supportive for your thyroid and for your overall metabolic health and i appreciate that what i don't appreciate is that um, it, it just, again, it becomes another diet, another, this is what I can eat. This is what I can't eat. And while the pro metabolic space loves to say that they have this like food freedom, again, this is like, it's like the vegans being like, I eat abundantly. I'm like, no, you don't. You do not eat abundantly. In fact, you eat the opposite of abundantly. You eat very restrictively. That in my mind or in my experience and in my expertise just ends up leading to a very unhealthy relationship with food, which ends up really dramatically affecting someone's quality of life and affecting their health. Um, and so it becomes this list of do's and don'ts. Now, what are the don'ts here? In the pro-metabolic space, the don't is PUFAs. That's like the big thing of like, don't be eating PUFAs. And it's said in a way that gets you to really fear polyunsaturated fatty acids, if you didn't know what PUFAs stand for. Um, and that in my mind is just so undo. Um, first off, PUFAs are found naturally in foods like everywhere. Oh my gosh, my onion fell. 
I got it. Um, so poofas are found in food everywhere. Like salmon has poofas, like I mentioned. Eggs have poofas. Like you can't get away from poofas. Now I understand the sentiment of like, hey, we shouldn't be just like disregarding butter and saturated fat and making saturated fat seem to be like the enemy and using just a bunch of canola oil, sapphire oil, and soybean oil. Okay, I understand that. I'm not saying that I'm for drinking and downing gallons of soybean oil. I agree. Probably not the most supportive for our health, but do we need to fear it? Is it something that we need to actively make sure that we never eat or take a bunch of vitamin E pills after to undo the fact that we ate um, a bunch of poofas? And as I have been kind of like around the pro-metabolic space, because again, there is a lot of like good intentions with it. Um, so it's kind of been just like, you know, I talked to Kitty Blomfield, I talked to um, Noelle Carvey and uh, Corey Malloy and all those people. Like, I've talked to a lot of the people and just reading their comment sections on their post, I just see people going like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be eating dinner tonight. Like, how many vitamin E pills do I need to take to undo the canola oil that I'm going to be eating? And it's just like, whoa, whoa. This went from being well-intentioned of like, hey world, let's stop fighting butter and let's just understand that it is a nutritious thing to all of a sudden, let's just be like totally, you know, fanatic about our food intake and never touch a single polyunsaturated fatty acid. And that, my friends, is what I have uh, against the pro-metabolic space. On 180 Degree Health website, which helps debunk a lot of these just trendy diets, uh, there was a dialogue going on about the Ray Peat diet, and this is some of the things that people said. His work, meaning Ray Peat, makes me paranoid. Thoughts on poofas, anyone? I'm totally afraid to eat it out anywhere because of them. I'm getting over it, but the guilt sneaks in. We should never feel guilty about our food. Someone else also mentioned, Ray Pete's philosophies helped me get back on the carbs. It didn't all work for me. I think it made me more obsessive and paranoid. I think it's great to be aware of his info, but it is easy to fall into the neurotic obsession trap. I felt like I couldn't leave home because I had to have my metabolism healing foods and how would I ever travel again unless I went to a tropical region? <laughs> okay, another person said, My opinion is that Ray Pete has some amazing insights into a lot of things and the knowledge that he shares can be very useful if the person seeking help is capable of using critical judgment and listening to his or her own body's needs. Therein lies the difficulty. Most people who seek help through Ray Pete's published articles and interviews and such are probably temporarily impaired in critical judgment and listening to the needs of the body. At least I was. So for me, Ray, Potts, Ray Pete sorry, thought to led to a temporary paranoia and fear about the things like phytoestrogens and grain and serotonin in dates and bananas. Fortunately for me, his PUFA paranoia is so seemingly extreme that it woke me up. I mean, he reportedly considers the PUFA content of berries too high. And I thought the ending here was great, it says, and so I realized that Ray Pete is as viable as the next person. And I was reading this whole just conglomeration of um, comments and stuff that people were saying and the main theme was the paranoia and the fear that this diet brought to them and I think that we cannot not talk about that. I'm like looking here and let me grab something. Let's grab, let's grab this. This is a new little sauce that I got from Trader Joe's the other day and I bet you anything there's going to be some sort of vegetable oil poofa laden oil in here, okay? Um, but do I need to just not eat the foods that I like because there's vegetable oil in it? No. Do I need to strictly abstain from all polyunsaturated fatty acids? No. No. We don't need to be so fixated on things. Nothing's black and white. We gotta get out of that like idea with food. So let's look here. Lemon juice, water, fermented chilies, sunflower oil. Sunflower oil, I'm gonna let you read it right there. Sunflower oil right there, like the fourth ingredient, okay? So that's just like one example. I know previous me would have been so, oh my gosh, like you can't eat this, what are you doing? And now me, I'm just, I'm at ease with it. I pick food for the overall, like this looks good, this looks edible, this looks yummy, I'm going to eat it and not the like, let me nitpick every single tiny little uh, mini ingredient. The next thing that I don't really like about this whole pro-metabolic space is that when you like look at the people who um, who kind of are the big kind of promoters of the space, 
and you look at like the food that they're eating every day and it's so similar like it's so similar it's very kind of regimented it's i have my oysters and then i have my carrot salad and then i have my marshmallows and i'm not dissing any of those foods oh my gosh all of those things right there are like very nutritious uh foods and they all have their place in a diet just like any other food but um i i get it i get that they um are eating those stuff but it's like that's all they eat and it makes me just question hey if you were just like invited to dinner would you say yes I think that's something that a lot of people in the pro-metabolic space wouldn't be able to do because they're like, no, I have to be eating this and this and this and this. And that is the territory and the land of orthorexia right there. Like that food is unclean and bad and this food is good over here. So even if I agree with like oysters are good and they have a lot of nutrition, it's the intention behind picking those foods. And the pro-metabolic space seems to just be very kind of regimented and strict with what they can and they can't pick. And I also am just like, how many people actually like oysters? I don't like oysters. I know that they're nutritious. I would way rather eat mussels or scallops or something like that. So I don't force myself to eat oysters all the time. Every once in a while, I'll have some oysters, but it's not something that I eat on a daily basis. And it makes me just question how many people are actually really enjoying those foods and are those foods really intuitively what those people want and in the quantities that they want. I don't know. And that's, again, why I kind of have a little issue with the pro-metabolic space. Too regimented, too strict, too just like everyone's eating the same thing. And I'm like, does anyone live? In Thailand, who does the pro-metabolic like, diet? Does anyone live in Japan? Does anyone live like in any of those places that have like a very specific like, cultural cuisine? Like that's where I just, ah, that's when I just start seeing something not being very supportive and good for the majority of people because I'm like, what if you're, you know, from Mexico and your family eats a ton of tamales and a ton of beans? And now all of a sudden, because this person who told you you need to eat the pro-metabolic diet tells you that you can't have corn and you can't have, you know, you can't have beans. I don't know if they can't have corn. I forget. But they they don't do a lot of beans. They don't do a lot of those type of stuff. Now all of a sudden, you're stepping out of what your family eats and you're starting to just adopt this other way of eating. Now I'm not saying that we can't change our diet and what we eat. Just because I'm French doesn't mean that every single thing I eat is French. But my family's French, so do we eat a lot of French food? Yes, so I do participate in a lot of those things, okay? And they wouldn't necessarily be quote-unquote pro-metabolic because well, the pro-metabolic space seems to be really low-fat. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the potatoes. I have a bunch of ghee. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to take a bunch of ghee, okay? Like a bunch of ghee because I like my potatoes to be nice and yummy 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 and I have this what happened to it huh that is very interesting and I have some of this kind of like Moroccan spice uh thing so I'm melting the ghee in the uh pan right here and I'm going to take this yeah so I'm gonna take this spice this is let's see what this is this is like crushed chili peppers, coriander, fenugreek, minced garlic, that type of stuff. So I'm going to put this in here. I need to actually turn this off. I'm not trying to burn the butter at all. I'm literally just trying to melt it. Put a lot of spice in there. I'm also going to take salt, put lots of salt in there. And I'm gonna kind of just mix that around. Make sure all the ghee is melted. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to literally just pour it all over these potatoes. I want to just read to you guys what people said in response to uh, this post that I had posted. Uh, someone said, thank you. I love butter and cheese and grain bread, but I also love nut butters and almond flour baked goods. I'm able to eat a balance of all these things. Being pounded with the 
being pounded with the poofas are the devil message is not healthy. I got my period back, achieved a healthy weight, and found food freedom eating all the things. I'm like, yes, right? And it's all about putting things in balance. And I talk about that in my course, how to find balance with all these things. Uh, with all these foods and everything um, but you 1000% don't need to be afraid of anything um, and this person said this was funny sorry I can't hear you over same as skin sizzling yes uh, this person said ah yes thank you for saying this uh, occupational living said this is everything yes the awareness of certain foods was beneficial for me but as soon as it turned into avoid these foods at all cost I had to pass this person said uh, yes it has had its place Yes, it has its place to be really helpful, but I had to pull away if I wanted to really recover. And I'm like, oh, yeah, so many people do, right? This person said, amen. I love their knowledge, but I always felt like I was never doing enough. That right there. That right there. I never felt like I was doing enough. You should never feel that with a diet. That, that is like religious guilt that you're feeling that is how I felt when I was Mormon and I used to feel like I wasn't someone who read my scriptures enough and I would get that feeling of like see God like you know made my car break down because I didn't pray enough this last week and that my friends is not ever a good thing to be feeling um, you know when your mother gives you like a little kitchen tool thing and you're like no mother no and then you actually realize it's like the most useful thing ever so so I peeled all of these garlic cloves, and I'm not gonna lie, I really love this little machine that my mom got me. So it's this little, just like, a little thing to catch the uh, garlic at the bottom, and it just has some little, like, blades here, and then just something to squish it down. And you literally go like this, and it creates, it's gonna be hard to do it, not on the counter, it's a lot easier on the counter. Woo! There you go. And now you have a little garlic. It's great. So I'm going to add the garlic to the potatoes. I just don't like to add the garlic until kind of the end. Like I like my garlic to be well cooked. I just think like the last 10 minutes for like finely chopped garlic like this is great. And I am going to keep the potatoes in there probably for like a good, you know, 40 minutes or something on like 375. So this is going to be added at the end. This is great. I love this little thing. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys real quick what I'm doing with the little tomato salad. So I'm cutting up some red onion um, in like the long slices, and then I'm going to let it sit in a bunch of white balsamic vinegar. You could also use just white distilled vinegar for at least like an hour to really just soften the onion. I don't like pungent raw onion. Uh, so I cut up parsley, I cut up tomatoes, putting it in this bowl, uh, covering it with olive oil, some salt, some pepper, um, putting the parsley, and then I'm going to make hard-boiled eggs and I'm gonna cut up the hard-boiled eggs in here as well. All right, the food turned out really, really yummy. I'm eating with my friends there. Hi! Hi! We got a little so good. perfect little wheel. <laughs> and then the salad was hard-boiled eggs with um, marinated red onion, tomato, parsley from the garden, and then just olive oil on top. And then the chicken was pesto that I marinated in the chicken and then slowly cooked that. And then we have some little green olives on the side. It's good. So good. <laughs> what are Moroccan, like what are in Moroccan spices? It's like chili pepper flake, mm -hmm. some garlic, uh, fenugreek, cumin. Cumin tree is super good.